You know, people say things to you as you're growing up as a black person when they, they would say, you know, did you know? Sammy Coleridge Taylor was one of those. Did you know that there's a black composer, very famous black composer, Sammy Coleridge Taylor is black. Wait, he did classical music. He was one of the people that we really looked up to, that we can do whatever we want. Majority of the time when I'm going to perform, people will go, Oh, you're playing tonight? Is it jazz? Are you playing, are you a soul singer? If we hadn't had people like him, we wouldn't be where we are now. Great at singing song, but also great at classical music. Oh yeah, I love me some Motown. <laughs> initially came with the idea of putting a gig on in homage to Samuel Coleridge Taylor. When I saw the Inventing South Norwood um, application, because he's an inventor in my eyes, he did invent things musically in terms of fusion of music and especially classical. He was way ahead of his time and more should be made of it. So that's what filled the passion in me. He was born in what is now Camden, Holborn, in a slum. When Samuel was two, the authorities decided to knock down the street. And he was relocated with his family to Croydon. Samuel must have been quite musical from when he was tiny because he joined the church choir there and somebody in that church helped pay for his music lessons. And when Samuel was a middle teenager, the, the Royal College of Music had just opened. And during, even by the first year that Samuel was at college, he was getting on very well. And there was a concert at the end of the first year. They played five pieces composed by Samuel. And it went down really well. And Samuel went and hid behind the stage because he was too scared. <laughs> You know, he, he didn't know his, his father and he was so keen to find out where he was from. As black people, we have that question. That's something that I think about. And so his, his, his music embodies this. And I mean, yes, it's, very, it's a classical piece and it has this classical sound, but he did an amazing job at showcasing who he is as a, as a human, you know, what his soul was saying. <laughs> Other composers going back to their um, heritage, you know, Coleridge Taylor was encouraged to do the same with African music, you know, but he also did it with African American music. You know, music all comes from the same place. The Black American thing grew out of the African expression, but it was it was differently expressed through the experiences they had of slavery and other things, you know, and and being um, incorporated into more of a, a Europe uh, white culture. So he took that and did some amazing work. He was one of the people that we really looked up to, you know, as far as that we can do whatever we want. We can, yes, do the blues, but we can also do classical music, which was very important, you know, for them, because black people like classical music too. What's so clever about the way he writes is he peppers in these kind of elements, but it feels, it's all classical, you know, when you listen to it, you're like, ah, oh, it has that like sound to it, which I think is really, really clever. I realise, I realise where some, like, a lot of this music comes from, it's from my history, from my culture. very sort of pan in his understanding of global things. It was limited, it had to be limited. He was also very convinced, quite rightly, about the equality of all people. And he got involved with the declaration about equality and he was significant, he was only 25. He went as far as to get involved with the first Pan-African conference, which was a big, a very radical kind of progressive thing, you know, to black people to get together and say, 
kind of create a whole nation in, in a sense, you know, that's going to compete with Europe, Europe and Europeans. World, we're bringing all black people together. Such a radical thing. And he put his hands up and said, I want to be involved in that. I was in the archives one day going through files. And I picked up this card and it said, Opus One, Piano Quintet. And I thought, is it really? Manuscript for the piano quintet when the dust of the uh, library at the Royal College of Music, which hadn't seen the light of day for about a hundred years. So we uh, resurrected that and uh, spent some time putting it back together and uh, doing a, a CD, a disc of which now is with the uh, British Library. to go on tour of the US. We did things um, based around African-American spirituals and stuff, you know. And um, to my ear, they they have the, the feel of it, the spirit of the spirituals. Even this, you know, the famous one, Hiawatha, you know, so that's taking on different types of non-West European voicings. He, he's kind of um, interested in Aboriginal American voicings. He really wanted to, you know, know more about Black America and stuff. So he tried to write music that brought in other traditions, but he brought all these rhythms and different tunes and things as he understood them to be. He, he was one of the few people that came over and made that impression on us. It'd be proud Black British, but also embracing the Black America, embracing Africa as well. He, I think there were other composers going back to their um, heritage and putting it into the classical canon, you know, and um, presenting it, it that way. And I think, you know, Coleridge Taylor was encouraged to do the same with African music. I think it's like a, the New England sound. I think that was it at the time. The composers were keen to kind of break away from the European classical sound and to to look, look back to the land they were on and be like, we want to um, incorporate this indigenous sound. <laughs> Hiawatha was a huge success. Of course, Coleridge Shelley didn't benefit from it because he sold it for a few guineas and his publisher made a vast amount of money from it. People tell us, you know, times have changed, but they haven't really changed, you know. I mean, he, his, his death did change things a lot. He's helped to do the Performance Rights Society. It, it, because of his death, people thought this is wrong. How could someone so popular, so um, successful in every way, be so unsuccessful financially in this one way, you know, how, how come his family didn't, he didn't get any royalties from it. He was just hustling, wasn't he? He was, he was teaching, he was um, getting whatever kind of musical jobs he could get, you know, and, and, but they were obviously not prestigious jobs, most of them, you know, he just had to, it's prestigious in the sense that they paid well, you know. It's, it's, I can relate to that guy, <laughs> yeah.
So the blue note is a note that isn't typically used in Western classical music, I think. Um, the, the, my favorite one is the flat at seven, which is, is hinted at and sometimes used in Western classical music but isn't used as uh, full-heartedly as, as the, uh, the blues players, as we like to use it, you know. Yeah, we, we can go a lot of places. There's not like a rule what a blues note is. It's kind of when you do it, you know. Sammy Coors Taylor, I find his music very modern in the sense that I think he was, he was interested in that. I think he, he wasn't a typical blues man, but to me, there, there, there's something that he was reaching for that makes him kind of part of the blues tradition, you know, or expanded from it, what the foundations of it were. Now, he wasn't trying to shout how clever he was. He wasn't trying to break the barriers for the sake of it. He was trying to extend things because he believed there were things to be extended. So, yeah, the blue note, the blue note is really, um, something that Samuel, I think, was aware of. And when you listen to some of the um, the more exotic, exotic being stuff that's not Western European stuff that he was he was aiming for, I think he he he, 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 he was he was conscious of that. It's, it's sad that his music's not more well known. I mean, he's a local legend. It's very sad that he didn't live longer. But always interesting to discover something new. He's quite an output in his shortish life.